you know, for being someone who's kind of in a public light, how I nervous fun has. So if you'll bear with me, <laughs> again, assalamu alaikum. Wuhuna adar yiri sawali gahan naga going, but then uh, I don't know. Sinan sasu subin dono. Ani ga wotan kana kusokara. I've been here for a very long time in Greece. Ka wuhuna kude first language kega because Merkista on kuhadla Merkista njogo. Kule again maga igwa ifrah. Wuhana hai hoye. Wuhana sawil labayi tuan sere jiro seventh grade. Kujiro hadlan. Wuhana hai na maalin. Wuhana diga ninth grade science. Merka Merkas wuhana shqaya at home and at work wuhana shqaya dadir or adolescence. And this is how I, a really critical period, um, a very important period in human development. And I think that's beneficial, um, both as a parent and as a teacher. Marka, everything, I agree 100%. In a Ilmahada school kiss a lassortit, in a lassortit, um, Alimintis and a lahirtit, in a Malimin to Kubertan, that's very beneficial. Anyone shall wear it into Makela Sahiran, or Kakib Galan, Ilmaho, Wabrashodo, or Iwidian Hata Hebel Sudu Yehe, Hadu Wabrashad Hata Kofi, and he socially Sudu Yehe, Dotka Mulheshia, Sefan Mohadla, respectful Mu Yehe. أبي أوفي عند أرماها سكولا إلى كور هاي سد إلما هذا السودية هاي بيكاز معلمين تيا سكول كحو جوجا eight hours a day more time وأنا كنا لقعته وهذا كل قادني بعد تام هذا جروك هو ما دو دالين هاي ما يبي ما بقول الشيء كيس نكرابه بيكاز he's tired ما عنده من سكول بكون مقين هاي so إلما هذا teacher كا يا إلما هاي وحلا دكتان بي most of the time لجوجان that كاسا they really know your child مركا أدبن that كا كله لها لحرير معلمين تا سكول كا كور قب add سكول كا and I really, really agree with Abay Shani Hateri. In that ilma hada, yeah, other dahiru yiri that you. Um, oh gosh, Somali is so difficult for me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, what I wanted to say is that kadan wahidhan. I completely agree, and I don't want to bore you and repeat everything that people said, right? So what I wanted to talk about is the adolescent like brain development. Okay, a lot of times marke ilmaha sokan garan we think that they're physically mature as well as mentally mature, but they're not. The body looks like how we know you. Like in Muscat, it's still a child, right? A chayba ha mihali ra da Muscat lo da kasha kaisi ni sana ma a chayba or or decision making garanesa. This is the last part of the brain. It's called the prefrontal cortex or mesha Muscat lo hara, and that is responsible for making good decisions. And it's not developed until like 25 to 30 years old. Marka ilmaha they're working with their what's called the amygdala and the hippocampus. Tasna wa hema musha. Emotions. Okay, these young people, they are thinking with their emotions. They're not making good decisions because the part of their brain or decision is fully developed. Right? So, and I try to think about that when I'm dealing with teenagers. I try, I try to think about that. They go from being really sweet to they start talking back to you. And then, and then, we dip sana yan hadal kala. And then, mail kali kum shkul sinihin. Mes computer kum shkul sinihin, mes TV kum shkul sinihin. Anyways, dip hadal kala we dip sana yan. Hadal hu shaykh tin we dip sana yan. Hadal kum kum sur elina yan. Ilma hadal sweet innocent aha is now like growing horns. You know, marka. And I remember that because abe ani hatta igu yir marka anu hiri sadi hiton sana marka garte. You grew horns. Abar kasa mhali rada. I became an adolescent. That's when I was going through. The changes, right? But the changes are not just physical. The changes are also emotionally and mentally. And I feel culture can adakan hante na wahanu malena ilmaha marke so kangaran in a mentally emotionally also kangaran. But they're still children, right? So marke dot kanon pay mamo dot kigo hore. They said really important things. Ilmaha sahib lan nako la she kaiso no la shodo step by step all aso. Sometimes they're not going to give you a lot of information. So in in a sit way decent way. Sometimes I go coffee in in at where is it? Maybe Melba also at Tingari go with him, and I just throw in a question. Honey, today Manta, how we feel now, Manikala? Instead of saying how was your day at school, I'll say something like, what was the best part of your day? What didn't go so well? Like what was something that disappointed you? 
um, how did you feel, like, let's say, in science class, I do science school will sit How did you feel about math today? You know, just like little questions. So that would remain in an interrogation because when we interrogation, they shut down. That's it. want to come here sit. So you gotta get them in a nice situation where it's unexpected, right? But you have to, as a parent, in a listen step by step their mental and emotional development because this period, adolescence, who they are. So the big questions in their life is, who am I? They're trying to figure out their identity, right? I there mentioned something really important. Somalia. A lot of parents know Hayrawan, the way they were raised. But that's not possible because, first of all, different generation. So there's already a time difference, there's a generational difference, there's a cultural difference as well. I think Somali Walidinta have a really hard time accepting that Il Mohal, the part of their kids, is American. Right? They're growing up here and they're adapting to this culture. And this culture is becoming their culture. And they have a little bit of Somali, a little bit of America. They have their own unique culture, right? So I feel like some of the things that is just that lack of understanding, that not understanding that culturally, your kids might be a little different from you. Especially since a lot of them probably are not gonna go back to Somalia. And this is their country now. And they're becoming invested politically socially, right? So I feel like there's, there's like a barrier, a cultural barrier, a language barrier, right? One of the pr um, people uh, before me said that Mamoinko or Aboinko, they're not learning the language, right? I can tell you, I didn't have to have Somali look at I'm a little nervous because of everything that's going on, right? And I shouldn't be nervous because I'm used to being in front of the camera but not representing myself, right? Usually when I'm behind the camera or in front of the camera, I'm portraying a different character. but. But the fact of the matter is a lot of kids that are growing up here, English is their first language, it's their native language now, right? They don't really speak Somali. They might hear it, my son, he hears it, but he can't say anything back to me. I feel bad about that. But I also know a lot of parents that are like that. A lot of parents have children or have Somali kuhadli, right? So culturally, language-wise, the environment the environment becomes a part of you. It becomes part of your identity. You can't escape that. The environment that you grow up in, it, especially in these critical years, adolescence, these critical years where kids are asking themselves, who am I? All they have to do is look around them. Who do they interact the most with? Yela Shekistan, the most. Where are they? They're in an American public school, right? They have peers. They're receiving a certain education. And maybe you can balance that a little bit by what you do at home. But what I see sometimes is, most of the time what I see is, Somali ban hai, Sidan ban subina, Sidas mas subino, and the kids are receiving conflicting messages, right? They're receiving conflicting messages because at school, I mean, they might be Jama who's a Somali kid, but who's also Jama who was born here and grown up here and has friends and who mostly speaks English, right? So there's a cultural conflict, an identity conflict. And I can personally speak to that because I also grew up in this country and I came here when I was 12 years old. And my parents tried to Dakan Alis, they tried to send me to Garissa. <laughs> you know, I have horrible nightmares about Garissa. <laughs> it's hot and there's a lot of mosquitoes and I did not like that place, right? But I feel like part of the things that we need to do is that we need to accept that our kids have a different culture from us. And in al or we make peace with that. We make peace with that. They're not growing up in a country that you grew up in. They're not growing up in a culture that you grew up in. And they are their own people. You need to still find a way for them to remain your children. That they still have a home with you, that they can still come home to you and you are a safe place even though they might be a little bit different. Because when I was growing up, a big alienation, like a distance between myself and my parents. Right? I couldn't tell them anything, and it was so I only had my father, but I couldn't tell my father about anything, because I was afraid. 
of what he would think of me. We are afraid what you think about us because we do care about what you think about us. Right? Because you might think badly of us and your opinion about us, it matters to us. You know? So that's, an, that's another thing, like the open door policy, I really believe in that open door policy. One time, he's 12 years old, right? I was really worried. The first couple of weeks, you know, I was happy. And then one day, he got in trouble. I got a call. I came home. Yeah, you know, just typical parent. I can't believe you. Like, why would you do that? You know? And you know, he said something really important to me. Because I'm a single mom, and I'm busy, and I'm always on the go. And throughout my child's entire life, I have a undergraduate, I have a master's degree, I have a master's degree, I have a master's degree, I have a You know? So all this time, he's seeing me go, 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 go. If you spend time with me and loved me more, maybe I wouldn't do these things. I just sat down. I just sat down and I held him. I said, I'm so sorry. Because he doesn't care about the degrees. The degrees. I said, his mom. His mom. His mom. His mom. Even though he's getting older, even when we're getting older, we still need you. Right? Because adolescence and growing up is scary. And we want to know that you got our back. Right? We want to know we're your child and you love us no matter what. A lot of times, like I talk to young people a lot because I work with them, right? And I'm in social media, so I just like talk about my my journey anyways. And a lot of young people tell me, like, I can't tell my mom this because Guru Liga Fiji Naya. I don't even know Guru Liga Fiji. You know? But that's the worst thing you can do to your child. You know what? You know why? Because they're going to find the love that you're not giving them somewhere else. And it's not going to be good for them. Right? If you're a girl, you might find it in a man that's not good for you. Right? If you're a boy, you might be finding it in a gang or drugs. Right? But that's what you do to us when you kick us out. You throw us to the wolves. So, and a lot of parents do that. A lot of our parents do that. Where am I going to go? You know? So what I'm trying to say with all of this is, keep your children close to you, no matter what. Whether they're good or they're bad, they're your children. Okay, so keep them near you. When they mess up, and they will. He's 12 years old. I anticipate that he's gonna do something wrong because there's no one who's perfect, right? So when he does wrong, I'm gonna obviously tell him what you did was wrong, but the first thing that I do is I hug him. And I tell him, I love you. Whether you do wrong or right, you are my child. And I will always love you no matter what. He needs to hear that. Because a lot of times, they just throw you away. You know, you're not their child anymore. But I, oh, first of all, get out, leave. Right? So when we do wrong, we know we're not we want you to make us feel like we're not going to be able Especially in the Right? I don't know how to do it. I don't know A lot of times, as you can see, you know, I don't, I don't wear hijab. That was one of the things I had to do with Kenya. Right? It didn't change my behavior. Right? It didn't change me. Right? I'm still the same person. But what happened to me is that she doesn't wear hijab. Hablaya, she wears like short skirts. Hablaya goes to the shisha spot. Hablaya is doing that. Hablaya is doing this, right? And we used to have a village. You know, in America, we don't want that surveillance. Marabna surveillance. Because the culture here is different. From the moment that kindergarten, you're told you shouldn't be a tattletale. Stop tattletaling, right? So our culture, as children who are growing up in America, is telling someone else what your child did wrong. It, it's, it's seen as a bad thing. So like, so there's a cultural difference between parents and children. Why isn't Havlai staying in her lane? That ain't none of her business. You know? So there's a cultural difference between parents and children. 
and the, the gap will widen unless there's a lot of love and acceptance. You keep your children close to you. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And you accept them as like flawed human beings. They're gonna mess up a lot of times and sometimes they're gonna disappoint you. But tell them that you still love them, okay? <laughs>